We're okay. going to close on a list. Oh, uh, yeah. What's our list? It's been a little while since we've done a list. Here, according to Vulture, at Vulture.com. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh-oh. It is the <laughs> top ten music documentaries of all time. Uh, yay! All right. Yay! Who did this? What is that from? <laughs> you, sound like special, you sound like Special Ed on Crank Yankers there. Um. <laughs> Okay, <sighs> number ten. Uh, I haven't I haven't looked at this list ahead of time. <clears throat> okay, but I don't think we'll have a problem with most of it. Number ten is the last waltz. Yeah. Wow, that's wow. low. <laughs> that feels low for for the last waltz. Uh, yeah, I wonder if uh, you know. I mean, how do you guys feel about the talking portions of the last waltz? Because I mean, it's I think those so long. I don't remember them or you know exactly, but um, I was like, God, I watched it on PBS so long ago for the first time. I'll never forget that. Like when they were raising, you know, when the PBS is, when they would do the fundraising, they yeah, were, like the last waltz around it every time. I mean, it was like we're showing the last waltz. It's like yeah, this is the fifth time this year. Uh, you know. So, but do, do you? How about you, Jamie? I mean, what do you what do you think of those? Sequences, you, because I feel I feel like they're a little manipulated a little bit, and I'm not even sure they're really telling the truth, or I don't know, are those even necessary? <laughs> you know, we're watching yeah. the greatest musicians, a litany of the greatest musicians in the world, and the concert itself was four hours long, and uh, yeah, but well, uh, you know, it, it it depends on the film. I mean, when you're when you're talking about because I'm sure this isn't the last time Scorsese's name is going to be mentioned in the top ten, but if you're talking about something like Woodstock, uh, those those interview snippets and stuff are, you know, to uh, further uh, what that experience was, the Woodstock experience. It wasn't just about what was going on stage; it was about the culture that was happening off the stage. Yeah, uh, so, I have less I mean, a problem you know, with with that with that particular instance. Yeah, you know. but, but there, there, uh, there's a thing about. I mean, at what point do we stop talking about the music? And it's more important to show to to listen to it than it is to listen to people talk about it. Uh huh. So I think there's yeah. Yeah, to me, to me that I mean maybe that's the reason that this has hit number ten for this particular writer because. Because maybe the talking uh, takes away from the actual concert experience, you know. Because you kind of just want to the talking, uh, the you know the you know it's Robbie Robertson, you know, sort of preening and and uh, and then then you know there's, there's very little attention paid to you know Levon Helm, who really should be just right yeah. there along with with Robertson in terms of focus and. Uh, you know, Garth Hudson's was, not was, really talked to he, very much. And, he, he, he he obviously took a shining to Robertson because they obviously well they were best went friends. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were best friends. They were Coke buddies. <laughs> they were they were they were they were, they were they pussy like hounds. I they were pussy hounds together. Uh, they I um, saw the band twice. I saw them twice in concert. They were great. That was a great. Those were great shows. This now, later, obviously, you, much later on, much later okay. on. Okay, we're talking about the, the early yeah. '90s, but my friends you know, it's like, it was, it, it's like last night here in town. Leonard Skinner was playing a concert, and I'm like, no, they're not. I, I understand Leonard yeah, Skinner oh, has I been know. around. Oh, God, that's like, it has been around oh, since the plane crash. But, uh, <laughs> the real Leonard, the real Leonard Skinner is before Ronnie Van Zant died. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, of course, no, no. You're absolutely right, Jamie. I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, absolutely. Um, but, but back I, to I, um, back to the last back to last waltz. Just just let me just say this last thing. It is a fantastic movie. It is the, one of the greats, even with the talking parts, which I can accept. I I I, I accept those in terms of like, well, it's kind of about the making of the movie itself. So I kind of enjoy those. But uh, uh, the music is so great, and the filming of that music is so fantastic. So well worked out. I mean ridiculously worked out uh yeah. that uh it, it's it could be nothing 
less than than uh, you know transcendent when you when you're watching it. I mean, uh, it, he, know, he knows know. how to film it. He knows he knows how to film music. You know, he knows how to film mm-hmm. musicians at work, Scorsese. And even though I don't like, I mean, I'm fine with La La Land. Uh, that guy knows how to film musicians that work together. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Whiplash guy. That would be neat to see him do a music doc. Yeah, yeah. That would be very, uh, very number, good. Their, their number nine is uh, Searching for Sugar Man, uh, which, mm, you know, okay. I watched this like a few few weeks ago again. Um, mm-hmm. So I was, I was wondering how it played after, you know, the bloom was off the rose. And, you know, it, it, it has the joy of watching it that first time. is just this enormous sense of discovery. If you go in, which the movie kind of lets you go in not knowing – anything about it, it doesn't reveal its hand right off the bat, that this Mm-mm. dude is still alive, which I, I, I love. Um, so I, I bet you a lot of people watch that movie for the first time not knowing, what the fuck? What? He's alive? What? Um, oh, yeah. It, yeah. Major, it has to be a major surprise for people. Uh, so uh, I I hate that we're, you know... <laughs> We're we're revealing the surprise, but by now, you know, if you're a movie geek, you should have watched Searching for Sugar Man. I mean, it was only you know the great, you know, the Oscar winner for that year. And, it's a really uh, just a firing feel good movie too. It's just such a feel good movie. Um, yeah, it's I like good. It. it is. And I'm, I'm ashamed too. I'm ashamed too because I knew nothing about Searching for Sugar Man. This was this was like months before anyone wrote about it. In months mm. before, the, you know, if it played at a film festival or something, and uh, I got offered Rodriguez and the and the filmmakers, and I was like, I don't know what the fuck that is. I'm not going to take uh, that. Oh my god! <laughs> and I was oh like, my god! I can we, can I we go back movie, in time? Like, this is like one of the great movies of the year. Oh yeah. boy, that that kills me. Oh shit, that that's really that's sad. Well. Oh well. Anyway, moving okay. on. Number, Great movie. Number then. eight. It is number eight from 1979. The kids are all right. That's I'm, a little, that's I'm a little lukewarm on that one. I haven't. I that's another one I haven't seen in ages. I I haven't seen it since uh, since the early days of HBO. I, I actually, but um, I mean, it's got a lot of. I, I remember it having a lot of good footage, but. Uh, you know what I would choose over that would be the Rock and Roll Circus, the thing with uh, oh the Stones, that, the, the, yeah, with the Stones I, and the Who, and and their and it's basically just a music documentary. That's all it is. It's just these performances, and uh, I think that's even though it's not exclusively about the Who, I think it's got the best Who performance on film. Uh, so which uh, I, which is their version know. of. I know what my number one music documentary is, and so I'm curious to. I'm not. I'm not scanning down ahead of time. I'm curious to see if it's. Oh yes, you are. You're lying. Man. I know you. <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay. Their number seven. I haven't seen. It's. It's. Uh, the number seven is from 2000. It's called Freestyle: The Art of Rhyme. I haven't seen that. Either. I don't. I, the I don't, I don't know that one. Okay. Um, Fitz, Fitzgerald. This is Kevin Fitzgerald. Uh, takes an interesting approach in that the movie is about uh, the raw material of rap, which is the rhyme itself. Mm. There's uh, rap battles with dozens of artists, um, conversations about inspiration and attitude. He opens the genre up even for the uh, non-connoisseur, explicating its nuances. Mm. It's a good writer. Okay. It's a good writer. Yeah, good yeah, writer. Decent, yeah. That's a that's that's a good good piece. Uh, yeah, I mean, I do have to say that with rap, uh, I am fascinated with the uh, with the mindset that uh, is able to master freestyling. Uh, I, I I don't know how they do it. I I'd be very interested in that because I, I'm uh, fascinated by it. I'm fascinated yeah. by it. Yeah, just I, I I it seems it seems like. What are they reading rhyming di- dictionaries all the time? I just uh, are they walking around, you know, making rhymes in their heads, or how ha- how do they do it? I I don't know. It's it's uh, it's superhuman in some ways. Number six <clears throat> is a 1967's uh, the Pitta Baker film. Don't look back. 
Oh yeah, that's a that's a great one. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. I mean, yeah. Absolutely. How would you compare that one to the? Uh, how would you compare that one to No Direction Home, which is the Scorsese? I knew you were gonna say that. I like that one too. I won't lie. I like. Um, I do like that one. I like No Direction um, Home definitely. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously it's that's very good, but. Uh, but it, it, it wouldn't exist without "Don't Look Back." No, uh, because no you know right. <laughs> they could, they had to take a lot of Penny Baker stuff, and there was so much stuff that Penny Baker uh, shot for that that they were able to release two other movies uh, that were left, you know, that were like made up of the stuff that they cut out of "Don't Look Back." So. <clears throat> um, Lesser movies that I can't even remember their titles now, but um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, that's where you get to see the raw, uh, you know, this newcomer, <laughs> Bob Dylan. It's crazy yeah. to think that there was a time where he was a newcomer, but uh, but he was, and he was instantly fascinating. And uh, in his own way, he was just as fascinating as the Beatles were. Like, for instance, in his in his um, uh, you know, in his press conferences and so forth. You know, the Beatles yeah. were famous for charming the press with their humor and everything. And uh, Dylan was able to do it with with some humor, yes, but also with a measure of uh, <laughs> a measure of disdain and uh, right. disdain for the press, and also uh, a, a sense of a, a kind of sense of the absurdity of it all. Uh, and I think all of that stuff was fascinating for the press too, but in very different ways, of course. An interesting uh, so, part of the uh an interesting part of that Joan Didion documentary, by the way, is um it is when it talks about how much she loved Morrison and when she spent time interviewing Morrison. Um, oh. uh by the way, a band called Death uh is made number twenty nine on this list. Oh, okay. Good. Okay. I, I know that because the list inextricably Pan, panned up, so now I'm trying to pan back down. <laughs> Good. Uh, we are at number five. Their number five is my number one. And I know you'd argue it's not a music documentary, but look, it takes place entirely in the world of music. Uh, it, and it's Give Me Shelter. Um, because, Dean, you and I were talking the other day about uh, what makes documentary so great, and it's they're especially great when when life is unfurling right before the cameras yeah. when history is being made. And that happened in this documentary. And the documentary mm-hmm. com- completely changed its purpose on a dime uh, right. based on those events that are captured live. Uh, and, and it becomes something so haunting. And it was supposed to be, if you if you parallel that with what it was supposed to be, which was just following the stones around on tour. Mm-hmm. And they witnessed the mur- They witnessed this murder on camera, and right. uh, and there's there's this really like haunting quality about it. It it really does feel like, you know, it feels like a part of that era of of, of the true the true end of the, that kind of generation. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. No, you're absolutely right. There's nothing more chilling than seeing that freeze frame of uh, oh, yeah. Oh, of, Jagger. Yeah, of, yeah. Uh, of yeah. Jagger as he's turning away from the moviola or whatever after watching the the murder on film. Yeah, and, and he just, should have he should have ended it there. He should have ended it there. But you know, I'm thinking about it um, because he doesn't end it there. The the, the credits roll on the next shot which are just a bunch of hippies walking uh, down the street away from the concert. Mm-hmm. And I understand mm-hmm. thematically why that works, because uh, because it's them kind of walking away from from that point in time. You know, it's the, the hippie generation, they're going, I mean, they're going in the opposite direction. They're going off into the sunset, I think is mm-hmm. what he was trying to say. But mm-hmm. I, I, that, that image of Jagger is so uh, striking it uh, is. that it should have that should have ended right there. It does yeah. feel like it should be the end, the last shot mm-hmm. of the movie. That's a good so, point. But, That's a good point, guys, about that. Yeah. That's really good. But, yeah, I, I love that, too. I would put that in the top five, too. Uh, what a remarkable movie. And I, and I actually, you know, Brett Morgan, um, 
you know, he's winning raves now for the the Jane Goodall documentary he did. But he he did do a Rolling Stone documentary, Crossfire Hurricane. And so when I interviewed him, I asked, you know, you're doing it. You did a doc about the Stones, uh, but you have, you know, the the brass ring out there with Give Me Shelter. And mm-hmm. I said, how, do, how did you kind of contend with that? And he said, you know, one of my main objectives was to find out what they thought of that movie and the legacy of that mm-hmm. movie and that event that it captured. So he mm-hmm. said, yeah, I, I, you know, that was a, that was a, a beast. To try try to you know go face to face with, but um, mm. it's real. It's just an astounding movie. Number four yeah. is uh, from two thousand one. It's called Scratch. Uh, DJ Shadow. I had a uh, feeling yeah. that would be on here. I had a feeling that would be on here. I'm not sure I agree with that entirely, but that it was so high from up. Doug but Gray. I just have a feeling. I don't know anything about it. Uh, you, it was very popular it. when it came out. It was very popular okay. when it came out. It was very, I mean, yeah. Um, wow, okay. Uh, well, you know, it's about the, 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 it's about the, D, the, the DJs um, um, and what, what they do. It said, it said yeah. ultimately, ultimately Scratch does what a great docu- music documentary should do. It not only deepened, deeply understands the culture it's chronicling, it covers it so well that even someone who knows nothing about it will come away feeling invested. Okay. Um, so, yeah. All right. Just I don't know how I feel about watching DJs and stuff. Uh, uh, I mean, I've gone to a DJ Shadow concert and uh, and also a DJ uh, Scanner concert as well. And I'm like, yeah, this is kind of weird just seeing a guy standing up at a machine just standing there. I don't know. What's Bizarre. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's, it's fascinating. I, I like guess, the oh, record. <laughs> well, you know, Fat Boy Slim is fucking in heaven. Yeah. Number three yeah. is uh, Aaron's favorite movie, actually. I think it's Aaron's all time favorite movie, and that's uh, Stop Making Sense. That's I didn't realize movie. that that was Aaron's favorite movie. That's crazy. Well, I mean, you know. I I'm all for that, you know. I I I think it's the best movie of that year, '84. Yeah. Uh, I think it should have won Best Picture. <laughs> I think that's crazy to say that, but uh, but I I didn't have I've never had more fun in a uh, in watching a movie. Um, no, it's a good one. It's a great. I mean, it's truly really great. Um, Jesus Christ! I mean, yeah. Wow. It just puts you there, and uh, you just feel like you're. It's really the only concert movie that makes me feel like I'm at the concert. Uh, mm-hmm. Very, very, very few make me feel that way, and um, it, it just all comes down to the way it was designed by uh, not only by <coughs> by uh, Demi in terms of film, but uh, uh, by the Talking Heads in terms of the stage. Uh, the staging of it, um, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, it's it's got so many great visual elements, and it's just like it's like a movie. Like every single song that passes by, it's like surely it can't get better than this. It just can't get better than this, and it just continually does. Um, and uh, yeah, it, I mean, he just, he was obviously blessed with a great uh, great subject, <laughs> you know. Uh, a, a, a great, uh, obviously great music, music, but uh, just interesting, especially Burn. Interesting to watch on stage. I mean, he was just so odd, and you know, you couldn't take your eyes off of him. But um, he's got a new album that I want to get. He did a collaboration with Brian Eno that I think just recently came out that I want to get. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, he was also blessed in the fact that these were all. They were all art school students, uh, so they all have a very uh, keen visual sense, and uh, yeah. and that's one of the things that makes the movie pop. Is the is the, uh, is the you know all the stuff that's going on behind them, and the and the the way that they come out on stage, you know, one by one, mm-hmm. and the, <clears throat> the just the very the very notion of the lighting and the costuming and the. Uh, 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 of all the people and the the way everybody's 
personality comes out in the film is is also very fascinating. That uh, just through the pay, playing of the music, uh, it, it's it's an extraordinary movie. And uh, if you ever get a chance to see it on the big screen, go 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 go. It doesn't matter if you're a fan, if you're not a fan, if you found them irritating or whatever, go anyway uh, because it, it 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 will change your mind. Also, uh, I mean, Demi was making music documentaries up to the very end of his life. I mean, he was. Yeah. He had just he had just released uh, the Justin Timberlake concert film. He came on our show a few years earlier to talk about a music documentary he made. I mean, he was mm-hmm. deeply invested in that genre. Yeah, um, more so than almost any other director. I mean, you can't. I can't yeah. name too many other directors that have done more. Well, shit. He he must have done at least. Seven. I know he did two, two uh, Neil Young documentaries. Yeah, and he mm-hmm. and he also did the the Robin Hitchcock. So I mean, he yeah, he was extraordinarily Hitchcock, right devoted. Forefront of Hitchcock, isn't that it? Yes, Forefront. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's a good. Those are good, yeah, good, good films. Okay, number two. Uh, the decline of Western civilization, part two: the metal years. Um. I that's I don't know if I put it that high, but it's a great film, and the first one is also a very good film too. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen the third one. I don't know if I've ever, but this Metal Years has one of the one of just the most memorable and disturbing scenes in it. Um, Chris Holmes of the band Wasp getting drunk in a swimming pool with his mom watching on. Um, you have not seen disturbing until you watch that. Um, <laughs> just cringeworthy. It's cringeworthy, but it's a very. Wow. He's by the way a reformed. He is reformed. He's a recovering alcoholic. Um, I read an interview a couple of weeks ago. Um, but and he, I mean, that scene is there forever. I mean, that part of the film. So I mean, it's just something that it's a wake up call. But it's a very good film. Um, and I very strongly recommend it. Um, recommend is it, it better more, than the no. first one though? Is, is, yes. is that possible? Yeah, it's more. It is better than the first one, but the first one is very good though. Do not get me wrong. Um, it's a, it's an excellent film, but it's just I guess the the second one has how should we say it more memorable moments if you will um, and better production and values and stuff a little bit and... yes 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 but I mean look it's Penelope Spears she does that before she's made Wayne I'm not totally wrong I like her as a commercial director but she made some really great like the Decline of Western Civilization movie Suburbia obviously I mean really a really great director when we talk about female directors yeah. her name doesn't come up enough. Um, yes, it does. Well, and it after doesn't. you after you see the decline of Western civilization, uh, you don't blame the studio for automatically uh, uh, to pairing her up with the Little Rascals. I mean, that's uh-huh. like a no I, that's not, I, I just I just don't I just don't understand what the hell anyone was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and they gave her they gave her Beverly Hillbillies too, right? Did she do that? As yeah, well? she did. Look, do what you do, do what comes your way. I mean, you know. I, well, all of that was because she directed Wayne's World, so they yeah, thought that, she that was, all came yeah. from Wayne. It all was, came from Wayne's World. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, so you can guess what their number one is. It's it's uh, Woodstock, which is the the go to for the a lot of the establishment in terms of music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, Woodstock is a great, great. Another great big screen experience. Uh, oh yeah, never, oh, definitely. You know the the uh, great split screen work and everything, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, <coughs> out of this top ten, I would have put uh, I would have put uh, Monterey Pop, another D. A. Pennebaker. Um, uh, I certainly. Uh, would have put uh, you know Woodstock definitely has a place and um, you know it's a, it's a pretty dang good list uh, yeah, all, all, I overall like I, I think I think just just the exclusion of Monterey Pop is the only thing I really have a major problem he, with uh, you know. I I think it's a great list um, which is rare that I would agree that we have such agreement on these things up yeah I'm curious, so let me ask you a question I do you like a lot. I don't know if I put it in the top ten. I do like it. The filth and the fury about the sex pistols. Is that on their list at all? Or I'm sure it um, is. I'm going down their list now. I mean, I see that uh, some kind of monster is number twelve. Uh, Twenty that, feet from starting. Guys, with... that's a great. That's a great film. Um, yeah. Just to watch that 
there are things, revelations in that movie that I still to this day are just like, wow, they they wanted they wanted this film. Okay, um, it's a fa- that's um, a fascinating documentary. Elvis, that's the way it is. You know what? Uh, this is interesting because I was about to ask if they ever made a a movie of the Isle of Wight uh, festival in 1970 because that that festival was bigger than Woodstock and it happened. I think they did not too long, not too long after Woodstock, and uh, I guess they got around to making it in 1997. It's the number 34 movie on this list. Uh, they had to shelve it for 27 years due to. Financial and legal right, issues. Problems. Yeah. Right. I mean, wow. you're talking about J- Jimi Hendrix, The Who, Free, Jethro Tull, The Doors, Leonard Cohen. I mean, all the albums are out there. You can buy mm-hmm. of Isle of Wight performances up the wazoo, but but I guess this is the documentary that puts them all together. It's good. It's good. I would also, you know, there's like there's lots of jazz documentaries, like Jazz on the Summer's Day, the uh, Aramavakian movie from 1960, uh, or, or uh, you know, Festival, which is about the uh, Newport Folk Festival uh, that was done in '65, which includes, you know, uh, the the footage of I think of uh, Dylan going electric for the first time. Um, yeah. And uh, and then uh, you know things things like uh, you know let's get lost the uh, the that's number um, twenty three the Chet Baker yes that's very good uh, Thelonious Monk Straight No Chaser uh, which that's was number eleven by, yeah Charlotte oh it made it up to number eleven that's good uh, so yeah there's a there's a lot of uh, a lot of great jazz stuff and. Uh, and uh, certainly, certainly, some of those that a couple of those that won the Oscar, you know, uh, mm-hmm. I, I guess uh, Twenty Feet from Stardom is good too. So yeah, yeah there's a right. very lot, but this is a good yeah. list. Huh. This is a good list, though. I got <laughs> that's a good list. Yeah, no Barry. Uh, okay. All right, got Monterey Pop sixty-five. Um, Oh wow, that is way low, way too low. Because I mean that what, what, that what, lineup what is. Stacks is on here. Oh, mm-hmm. Watch Stacks, that's a good one. Heavy metal parking lot, you know, I guess could be yeah, considered that, one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, no, it, hey, I was at that concert, so that was my first <laughs> concert, so. Uh, and uh, even even some things like you know from Mal to Mozart, Isaac Stern in China, you know, might might should be included or. Uh, What's happening? The Beatles in the USA was a good one. With uh, that's Albert and David Mazel's again. So uh, there's tons of great, great ones yeah. out there. 